The next chapter, chapter 41, باب قول الله تعالى يعرفون نعمة الله ثم ينكرونها قال مجاهد ما معنى هو قول الرجل هذا مالي ورثته عن آبائي قال عون بن عبد الله يقولون لولا فلان لم يكن كذا وقال ابن قتيبة يقولون هذا بشفاعة آلهتنا chapter recognizing the grace of Allah yet denying it is disbelief recognizing the grace of Allah yet denying it is disbelief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يعرفون نعمة الله ثم ينكرونها وأكثرهم الكافرون they recognize the grace of Allah they recognize the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet they deny it and most of them are disbelievers they deny it meaning that they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they recognize the bounties of Allah that these bounties are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in reality they are denying it how? when they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe in these bounties of Allah, that He is the creator, the sustainer, and so on. That means what? They need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Otherwise, they are denying this, as it's mentioned in the verse. So uh, it shows the mannerism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person has to stay away from the words of matters of shirk, like referring to the bounties to other than Allah, which even if a person, of course, says that this bounty is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is disbelief. But if a person believes that, but even in his words, he might fall into some bad manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by referring the bounties to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that negates the perfection of the tawheed. Not the tawheed in its original form, but it's a minor shirk or a hidden one that a person might fall in that would make him not have the perfect meanings of the tawheed. So as a result of that, Mujahid has stated, Explaining in this verse, the sayings of a man. This is what it means or the explanation of the verse. The sayings of a man as the wealth is mine. That this is my money. Right? Uh, I have inherited it from my elders. It's true that it's his money. But his money in regards to other people. Right? His money versus your money. It's his money. Nobody would say, well, it's, it's everybody's money. No, it's his money. Right? But when it comes to uh, the real ownership, everything is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So although he might say it in the proper context, in front of a judge, for example, would say this is money, there's nothing wrong with that. But the person has to be careful and not to forget about the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the believers, they say, this is the money where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed unto me. This is how the mannerism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even to that extent, saying such a statement, can make a deficiency in the heart when it comes to the Tawheed. I passed my exam, right? I made a fortune. I did this, I did that. Of course you did, mashallah, but who is the one that guided you to, to do that, gave you the power to do that, and made it as part of the, your destiny? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So instead of saying it like that, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guided me that I did that, helped me that I passed my exam. I uh, had the ability by the will of Allah, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on, right? So this is basically a bringing for us, that we change the way that to speak, that even that by itself is a da'wah if you're speaking to a non-Muslim, right? You're speaking to a non-Muslim, you say, I'm not sure how to give him da'wah and how to, uh, you know, talk to them directly about Islam. Don't be shy when it comes to such statements. You know, uh, it's by the, the grace of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that he guided me to do this. And then they would look at you weird, what are you talking about, right? And this is, starts the conversation of getting to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you do not own anything, you are owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of that, worship him alone. Also he mentioned here the sayings of Aun ibn Abdullah, they say, if so and so would not have been, such and such would not have occurred. Right? If it wasn't for the, uh, the smart pilot, uh, the plane would have been in bad shape, right? No, you should not say that. If it wasn't by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it, we would have been in a different situation. And being thankful to others, there's nothing wrong, but they're nothing but means. But the real owner of all things is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Qatada said, they say, meaning the disbelievers, that these blessings are the result of their deity's intercession. All the goodness in their life is because of these things that they worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of so and so is the reason for them to have this. No, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty and so on. 
So uh, this is the meaning of the verse. يعرفون نعمة الله. They uh, recognize the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they refer it to others, which is the worst injustice that a person would commit that uh, to refer things to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows an evidence here that the disbelievers, they understood the meaning of the oneness of worship, or the, the oneness of lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they believed that these bounties is from Allah, but uh, they denied the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And also the warning that we should not refer any bounty to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even uh, to the extent of which that we have this mannerism, that we refer everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yusuf alayhi salam, towards the end of Surah Yusuf, this is what he said. And if you ponder over the sayings of the messengers in the Quran, this is one of the things that you can recite the Quran from the beginning to the end for that reason only. Yeah, when it comes to the anbiya or the messengers and what do they say, right? You would see the best mannerism. Right? And, and this Prophet said, this Prophet said, see what do they say? You would learn the best mannerism on the face of earth. This is a subject by itself to be studied. The early generations of Islam, this is a practice that uh, many of us, we need to do that. They, of course, they recite the Quran over and over again many times, right? But he would have a khatma, meaning recite the whole Quran looking for one meaning that he's going after, right? You're reciting the Qur'an from the beginning to the end to see the verses that talks about the characteristics of the believers, for example. This is your main goal in this recitation of the Qur'an. Another time, another meaning, and so on. So one of which is to learn the etiquettes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the messengers did. When Yusuf alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought back his father and so on and so forth, he said, رَبِّ قَدْ آتَيْتَنِي مِنَ الْمُلْكِ وَعَلَّمْتَنِي تَأْوِيلَ حَدِيثِ فَاطِرَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ عَلَيْكُمْ سَنَا كَتُمْ أَنْتَ وَلِيِّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْأَخِرَةِ تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا سُوَانِ He said, O oh Allah, you gave me the kingdom. He did not say, I got the kingdom and uh, this and that, right? When he is in such a position that he has the ownership of many things, he never forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Rabbi, O oh my Lord, O oh my Rabb, you gave me the kingdom and you made me uh, have the knowledge of interpreting the dreams. Right? All of this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of that, our speech has to change. We have to immediately change the way that we speak. Everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always uh, recognizing the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, provided this food for me. Not that I brought you this food from that place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us with the food that I want and I get it. It's not like we're denying the means. No, the means is that we have to take the means. But referring all the bounties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, raising your children to believe in this, that it's not you that is providing for them, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that they are always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are nothing but a mean and we have to take the means but everything is referred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the last thing in the chapter, وقال أبو العباس بعد حديث زيد بن خالد الذي فيه أن الله تعالى قال أصبح من عبادي مؤمن بي وكافر الحديث وقد سبق وقد تقدم هذا كثير في الكتاب والسنة يذم سبحانه من يضيف إنعامه إلى غيره ويشرك به قال بعض السلف هو كقولهم كانت الريح طيبة والملاح حاذقة ونحو ذلك مما هو جار على ألسنة كثير He says after the hadith of Zayd ibn Khalid in chapter 30 that we mentioned before, in which Allah said in this morning, some of my slaves remained as true believers and some became disbelievers. Remember this hadith when they reign in the, 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 the Hudaybiyah. Uh, Abu al-Abbas, this is Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, such commandments have occurred frequently in the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah condemns those who attribute his blessings and mercy to others whom they associate with him. This is the injustice that the disbelievers do. They refer these bounties attributed to the idols, to the pious people, to the righteous dead, and so on. And they do not uh, recognize that this is the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, some other scholars of earlier days cite its example. As, if somebody would say, wind was blowing favorably, and that's why the ship you know, reached its destination. And the sailor was wise and experienced. And that's why we were safe. These words, it shows that the heart is in state of forgetfulness, right? In which they need to mention the bounty of Allah. Because this, for them to be saved, it's from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sailor and the wind and all of these things were means, 
nothing wrong with mentioning it, mentioning it, but people have to refer the uh, attribute the favors to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And he says, and likewise are the statement of most of the people. So most of the people, they do not perfect their tawheed in this regard. And that's as a result of that, we need to change and to be steadfast and always in being in state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, if people believe that the wind is uh, the thing that created and the thing that uh, brought the safety like this, in the absolute sense of it, then this is major shirk, right? But most of the people, especially among the Muslims, they would say that, uh, but forgetting about the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then that becomes uh, something that is uh, bad mannerism, uh, hidden shirk, something that would negate or, uh, the, the, the perfection of the tawheed.